computer screen, but that out. So that's my nice iPad mini there. So what I'd recommend for most people to do here is when you buy into an, a Mac mini like this, for some people, you know, if you're using this for, I don't know, like a media PC or something, a media computer, I mean, I guess you could go with the base model or, you know, very simple use. But in my opinion, why would you be buying the brand new flagship and then, you know, basically nerfing it and not having the performance you can get out of it because you're going to be using it for basic use? If it's for a super basic use... I mean, you're better off buying like a, a MacBook, to be honest, because that's a full computer with a screen and a keyboard or, you know, a, a, something else, a lower end one or a used one or something or, you know, a, an M1 version. So for most people, you know, they're getting this because they want the fast new M2 chip that's going to be super quick because it is a great chip. And they probably want this machine to last for a long time, you know, a few years at least because iMac, because Mac products, Apple products in general, hold their value for a long time, and they tend to be in good quality for a long time. So you're going to probably buy into this and use it for years. So for most people, you're going to be paying for that 16 gigabyte upgrade in the RAM because you cannot in any way increase RAM in the future. You can't plug in RAM. You basically, you have 8, or you have 16, or you have 32, period. And 8, you're going to go through it pretty quick if you're using this on a day-to-day -day basis and having lots of stuff open, unless you just love to close stuff down. Most people don't. Most people keep, you know, their, their browser tabs open, some Word documents or whatever, maybe some Excel spreadsheets, maybe some programs and things like that on the side, some other programs running at the same time. You're going to eat through that 8 gigabyte real fast, even if the operating system is extremely low. Even if the operating system was zero RAM usage, you only had 8 to work with, you're going to eat through that 8. So for most people, you're going with 6, in my opinion. So then what you need to consider is that that little 8 gigabyte upgrade, so you're going from 8 to 16, that little eight gigabyte upgrade is going to increase the price of this by about 30%, whether that's American or Canadian dollars. So you're getting a 30% increase on top of that. Apple assumes you're gonna upgrade. That's why they put the base price so you know enticing. It's super, super cheap. And then most people are gonna step that up to the next tier. But then you have to consider the storage. The storage upgrade prices are absurd. So if you go at the base here, it's only 256 gigabytes, which is nothing. I'm sorry, it's nothing. The operating system will take up a fair bit and as soon as you if you're doing like video editing that's gone like one video can devour your entire op, your, your entire storage to be honest if it's like a 1440p or 4k video it's gone or a handful of 1080p your storage is gone immediately it's just it's taken up so you need to then upgrade your storage but to go from 256 to 512 you're paying again 30 percent of this just for that storage increase so you're going from 256 up to 512 that's absurd. It's not fast. The storage on this is extremely slow. It runs around 1400 megabytes a second. And yes, that's fast. Some people will argue, but it's not. Not based on modern standards in terms of pricing. This little budget drive that I got right here, this one cost me, it's a silicon power. It's not expensive. This is one terabyte. Uh, it's a good, it's a reliable drive, but it's not expensive. One terabyte. It runs faster than this by about 20 to 25%. And it costs, cost me about 80 bucks Canadian. Um, and you can get two terabytes for like 160 bucks Canadian. So let's use Canadian dollars. So $160 Canadian for a two terabyte version of this. Or you can spend more money by about 50 or $60 more and get one eighth as much storage, 256 versus two terabytes. Come on. We're just getting to the point of absurdity here. It's slower and you're getting eight times less storage. And that's where Apple makes their... That's where they make their profit. So they take very low tier, slow storage, something below this in terms of the, the actual speeds, and you get one quarter as much as this, and you pay double, more than double, three or four times as much. So I mean, the cost proposition, they're basically, from what you can get if you did this manually, they're paying you're paying eight times as much to get the storage in a Mac than you're gonna be paying if you, you know, bought it on the street value or whatever. Eight times as much. So that's where we start to get into absurdity, where you know they're really making a lot of money on their storage. They're, but the storage, it was unacceptable to me. I am not. These are dropping in price, too. The prices are plummeting. It is not acceptable to charge eight or ten times what the market value is for something like this. For slower storage, this is faster, and this is a budget drive. Some of the other ones I have sitting around in my, in my computer here are 
double this or three times this or four times this in times of speeds. So they would be you know, five or six times faster storage solutions than this for half the price and you get four times as much of it. So it's obscene is what I'm getting at here. I do not advocate for upgrading the storage on this. It is a complete ripoff in all manner, shape, form, whatever. It's a ripoff to upgrade the storage. Don't do it. Get yourself something like this, you know, Silicon Power, Samsung, Team Group, whatever, Kingston, whatever brand you want. Get yourself an NVMe. Don't pay a ton for it. Get one that's, you know, relatively fast, 2,000 megabytes a second or something like this. Get yourself an enclosure like this and pop it in. So this right here is $100 Canadian, the combo of both of them. So there's 100 bucks. So I paid four times less than I would have got to upgrade that to the next tier, and I got four times more storage. So that seems like a pretty good value. And then you basically, you know, you just plug it in. And you can store all your files on it, you can store all your documents on it, uh, you can store all your things on this here, you just plug it into the back. And these have Thunderbolt 4. It's a fast connection. It's a very, very fast connection. The Thunderbolt docks, like the one I have here, you can get all kinds of stuff. This one actually has an NVMe built right into it. You can see there, you can get an NVMe right in there. So you don't even need one of these dock things. You just get a dock like this, put your NVMe storage in there, you get all your connection there, you get Ethernet if you get the higher end model, faster Ethernet than this has over Thunderbolt. So really, there's no, there's no reason, what I'm getting at here, there's no reason to pay for more storage in the Mac. You can get yourself a SATA drive, which is you know, 500 megabytes, not as fast, but it's still fast. And this is two terabytes for $100. So I paid half as much and I got eight times as much storage. So it's 16 times the value proposition for fast storage, 16 times. Um, and that's if you, know, you don't mind like a little bit slower, it's still fine. And if you want the same speed, you just get something like this. And so this is eight times the value proposition, not 16 times the value, it's only eight times. And so really what I'm getting at here is the Mac. iMac seems like a really good purchase and I think it is gonna be for me and for a lot of people. I would recommend paying that extra 30% or so to upgrade the RAM to 16 gigabytes for most people. To be honest, I would highly recommend that, but I do not recommend upgrading the storage because while it is slow, the stuff that comes in here, it's a freaking ripoff to pay for more storage on these Mac minis. It, it takes the entire value away from this when you have to upgrade the RAM to 16 gigabytes or 32 or whatever and then also upgrade your storage, then you're up way over $1,000, you know, $1,100, $1,200, $1,300. At that point, just buy a MacBook, like a good MacBook, brand new one. Why would you buy something like, but you can get a whole last MacBook, M2 MacBook for the same price. Why would you do that? So to keep these values low and to make the, to keep the price low and keep the value high, uh, you know, upgrade the RAM, do not upgrade the storage, get yourself some external storage for a fraction of the cost and just go with that. And then you can really enjoy your machine and you know just get a much better value out of what it is